Well, a proposed ban could affect Maryland teens. Good evening. This is CTV News, and I'm Denise Douglas. Well, popular energy drinks may be harder for youth to come by if one delegate has her way. The General Assembly will consider a bill to criminalize the sale of them to minors. This comes in the wake of the death of a Hager Sound teen who went into cardiac arrest after drinking 24 ounce Monster energy drinks. Opponents say the bill is well intentioned, but misses the mark. Advocates argue it's in the best interest of children. Long term effects are going to be. What I don't want to see is the fact that. When our kids are 25 or 30, if there are heart defects or heart problems because the kids have been drinking these things, we don't want to be in a position to be sorry that we didn't have the conversation now. Energy drinks are extremely dangerous for anybody with an underlying heart condition. And to all my friends out there in Prince George's County, please don't let your kids drink energy drinks. The penalty for selling a minor could be as high as $20,000 for repeat offenders. Well, many of you across the Maryland, including myself, received the Amber Alert notification on your cell phone yesterday about 11-year-old Caitlin Verts, who is missing after her mother, Bobby Cortez, was found dead in their Baltimore County home. Caitlin is believed to be with her father, Timothy Verts, who may be driving a 1999 Black Dodge Durango. He currently has a warrant out for his arrest, charging him with first-degree murder of Cortez. The Amber Alert may have left you wondering how it's coming to you on your phone without signing up for it. Well, according to AmberAlert.gov, as of January 1st, 2013, alerts will automatically be sent to all capable wireless devices for free. Important as a child missing, um, that having those emergency alerts can be really helpful in terms of getting the word out quickly to a large mass of people. To a certain extent, I do think that it's okay um, that it is being sent out. However, uh, the person that actually does uh, has the vehicle right now with the child, um, may already have probably that alert coming to him too as well. So he'll know the tactic to what to do to get around it and to, uh, you know, find a way to escape the situation of some sort. I don't have a problem with it just because it's an Amber Alert. You know, when you hear Amber Alerts about the children and, you know, there's no qualms about it. You know, any type of thing that come up on my phone about children, I'm, I'm okay with it because the public should know so that everybody can be aware of what's going on and try to help out because, you know, this little girl's missing. If it was your child, you know, you would want the public to know to try to help you out. So I didn't have a problem with it. I think it's a great system. I really do. Anyone with information on this case is asked to call this number, 410-887-7320. The minimum wage has been, by no doubt, one of the biggest issues of the 2014 General Assembly session. Today, a key vote on legislation that would increase the base pay for workers who uh, took place in the House of Delegates today. Rochelle Mesker was there and brings us this report from Annapolis. A bill that would raise the minimum wage in Maryland passes the House of Delegates after fierce debate, with Republicans calling the legislation a jobs killer. But supporters say this would put more money in the pockets of hundreds of thousands of Marylanders who are just struggling to make ends meet. The clerk will take the call. A major victory today for supporters of increasing base pay for low-wage workers in Maryland. Having 89 in the affirmative, 46 in the negative. The House of Delegates approved a three-step minimum wage hike from $7.25 an hour to $8.20 starting January 1st, eventually reaching $10.10 .10 by 2017. The 89 to 46 vote followed heated debate. If we had a good business climate in this state, we would have more jobs and we would have more opportunities for people to move up. This, by contrast, is a 40% increase in labor costs. And it's about finally recognizing that every one of us deserves a raise at some point. And if the employer won't give it to them, it's up to us as a legislative body to do the right thing. The bill exempts small businesses that make less than $250,000 a year and freezes the minimum wage for tipped workers at $3.63. Not enough to appease opponents who say the move will hurt more than help the state economy. $10.10 is a dramatic increase in the minimum wage. Our businesses can't pay it, especially in the rural parts of the state where they're competing with other states. We're going to lose those businesses to other states. Charlie Carter with Maryland Working Families disagrees. When you give more money to people at the lower end, uh, at the lowest wage workers, that money gets spent immediately in the economy. Um, 
there are just as many studies that say that this could actually be uh, an, uh, an economic um, stimulus. So a big victory today for supporters, but the Maryland Minimum Wage Act still has a ways to go. It now moves on to the Senate, where the bill is still in committee. And of course, we'll be following this bill, so tune into CTV News for the latest. For now, in Annapolis, I'm Rochelle Metzger. Back to you on the studio. Thank you, Rochelle. She also tells us that a Senate work group is scheduled to meet next week. A date for a third reading of the bill on the Senate floor has not yet been scheduled. Well, do you have a young person who will be looking for a summer job? Well, there's some bad news that unemployment for that age group is at 13.5 percent. However, under a bill introduced by Delegate Alonzo Washington, things could get better. It would give $500 a monthly tax credit to businesses that hire at-risk youth. They would get additional money for keeping them full-time. And we need, to, we need to train our kids in the future for the, 21st, for the 21st century, for the 21st century jobs, for the 21st century economy. And I believe that's extremely important. And as I said before, this bill is important because so many constituents tell me day in and day out that they see their kids sit on the side of the street not having a job, not having an opportunity. This will provide an opportunity for them. And they're absolutely right. With 13.8% of our youths being unemployed right now, it's, it's horrific. Delegate Washington says New York has a similar law in place that has been working successfully. New numbers are in for the month of February, and economists are surprised with the stats. The Labor Department reported that the economy added 175,000 jobs last month, up from 129,000 in January. Economists are shocked by the numbers because the harsh winter weather led to closed factories, lower auto sales, and caused existing home sales to plummet. The unemployment rate also increased last month by 6.7 percent, but experts point to an increase in job seekers who are optimistic about the employment market. Well, you are watching CTV News. I'm Denise Douglas.